Species distribution models are a, a fundamental component of district level licensing. Their aim is to predict the suitable habitat for a species, in this case, great crested newts. And we do that based on our understanding of the ecology of the species and thinking about the positive and negative habitat features for that species in an area. We know great crested newts like areas with woodland and grassland for hibernation and foraging and shelter. They also need lots of ponds, preferably with a neutral pH. Equally, great crested newts don't like areas with sandy soils, areas with high urban density or high arable density. They also don't like salt marshes. And this will let us understand where we're likely to find newts and where we're unlikely to find newts. The important thing about every data set that we put into a species distribution model is that the model is only as good as the data we put into it. And therefore, particularly in terms of observations, we want as many observations as possible. So we've been out as Natural England and surveyed thousands of sites across the country, but we also then go off to the local record centres, we go to amphibian and reptile groups, and we go to individual local stakeholders and ask for their data as well. And all of that feeds into creating a better model. One of the important factors when we're creating species distribution models is that every region is slightly different. The Lake District has its mountains. Norfolk, Suffolk is very flat, and therefore, what we need to do is incorporate different habitat features for each of those different areas and therefore we create a different model for each region and that's how we hope to create a better model more representative of the newts in that area. There are many different ways of creating a species distribution model. They're all based on different quite technical statistical methodologies. What we do at Natural England is we create lots of different models based on these different statistical approaches and we collate the predictions of those all together to create what we call an ensemble model. Ensemble models are quite similar to the way that actually weather mapping and modelling is done uh, for the weather forecasts. And therefore, by having these ensemble models, which incorporate lots of different methodologies, we hope that we're getting more consistent results and hopefully more performance from the models themselves. From our ensemble models, we create predictions of habitat suitability four great crested newts across an entire region. We predict based on a, a grid square of 25 metres by 25 metres, so it's very fine resolution. From those predictions, we can then use them for multiple other regions. The first thing we can do is we can look at the ability of a species to disperse across their habitat. And we do that using a process called least cost paths. And we look at the ability of a individual newt effectively to disperse across that environment. So if it's unsuitable habitat, it finds it difficult. If it's suitable, it finds it easier. And then we include barriers like roads, rivers, urban areas. The next stage is that we create our risk zone maps. And risk zone maps are there to understand the different compensation payments that developers will have to pay if they want to go through district level license. There are four main zones. There's a white zone, a green zone, amber zone, and a red zone. White zones are where we don't expect great crested newts to be at all, tops of mountains, for example. Green zones, where we don't predict there to be very suitable habitat. Amber zones, where we do predict there to be suitable habitat for great crested newts. And then the red zones. And red zones are specific areas where there are key populations. They may be internationally recognised, nationally recognised, or locally recognised. And they can be set up by the stakeholders themselves to help us with that process. The final maps that we produce are where are the best places to put ponds to benefit great crested newts across the entire landscape. And the way we do that is via our strategic opportunity areas, or what we call the sowers. These are maps that identify core and fringe areas where if we place ponds, we hope to increase the distribution or the population of newts. Core areas are where we already expect there to be newts and where there's suitable habitat. And if we place ponds in those areas, what we're going to find is hopefully an increase in the population. In the fringe areas are areas which are areas around the core areas. Those areas will hopefully have suitable habitat in terms of terrestrial habitat, but probably not have very many ponds. So by placing ponds in, we hope that the newts will disperse from the core areas into those fringe areas and increase the population of newts across the region. 
So we've undertaken to update all of those regional models every five years. And the reason we want to update them is because we get better information over time. For example, we'll have new land classification maps which detail where urban areas are in urban sprawl compared to where arable areas are expanding, for example. And we can incorporate that data into our models and refresh the models so we have a more accurate model over time. Also, there's potentially new modelling methodologies that will come along which may be better suited to predicting where great crescent newts are and therefore we would want to adopt those as well. Species distribution modelling, from my perspective, is about improving the status of great crescent newts across the entire landscape. We want to encourage developers to engage. We want to encourage habitat delivery bodies to put the ponds in the right places and our modelling approach enables us to do that.